Hey everybody, so this video is actually about Mac uh, and before I start it, I'm actually using any desk on here um, just as remote desktop software because I don't feel like setting this up on my Mac. So uh, there'll be a little bit of a lag like when I do stuff, you know, I'll click and then it's like a second later it actually happens. But anyways, as much as I hate Apple, the company, and most of the people involved with it, um, save for Steve Wozniak. The software, Mac OS anyways, is pretty good. iOS is terrible, but Mac OS is pretty good because it's a Unix-like operating system. So it's similar to Unix, similar to Linux, similar to FreeBSD. Actually, they stole a bunch of code from FreeBSD. So anyways, I made a whole video on how terrible Apple is already. Um, you can watch that if you want to. But one of the reasons they're terrible is because the people who created it and the people who continue to create it think that you, the user, are too stupid. And so you shouldn't change much uh, things like customizing the operating system because if you do, you'll break it because you're stupid. This isn't for me, this is from the Apple people. So like, for instance, on Linux, you can change anything. You can change anything to the point where you break it. That's part of the sort of freedom of Linux. Like you have all the freedom in the world, but if you mess it up, you mess it up, it's your own problem. Windows is sort of in between. Like you can tell they don't want you to change certain things, but there are so many utilities and everything available anyways, and uh, they don't really restrict you from anything, at least not in the way that Apple does. And Apple does it even worse on iOS, um, where you have to like jailbreak your phone just to install software that's from a different store. But for Mac OS anyways, there are some ways around it. And the one thing I'm gonna go over is a program called Deeper. So if you're interested in it, search for Deeper Mac Download. And the first thing that comes up here from Titanium Software is what you'll look for. Now the software itself is specific to the version of Mac OS and it says it right here. It's, uh, so if you have 10.10 versus 10.11, 10.12, 13, 14, 15, you need to get the version of Deeper for that specific version of Mac OS. So I'm running uh, 10.12 Sierra. This will still work on any of them back to, wow, it goes way back to 10.4 and up to 1015. Now, it says Intel-based Mac. Uh, this won't work with the new M1s. I assume they're working on software for that, so, you know, check back. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is the, so, so the Big Sur version will work with the M1, uh, or Intel, so scratch that. Um, I've got 10.12, and obviously the newer versions are going, to, are going to match with the newest version of Mac, and so there'll be some things that are different. But my point is just to show you this and to show you some of the neat things that you can do with it. Yeah, that's a remote desktop issue as well. Um, so, basically you download it, you get a DMG image, and then you install it just like you would install any other program, uh, where you just drag it to applications. I've already got it installed, so, so if you don't know how to install stuff, you would double click it, and just drag and drop that icon onto applications. And when you're done, you can eject, and then you can delete that. But like I say, I've already got it installed, so. Applications, deeper. Now it'll ask you for the password because it is going to change some things that require root access, that require the password. And so it asks you for it up front. But there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff in here that it can change. And a lot of stuff that is not necessarily hidden, but not super easy to find. Some of the stuff in here would require like command line uh, in order to change it. So, but some of the stuff is, is typical. So like show graphic effects when opening a window, uh, rubber band scrolling, accent menu, stuff like that. You can change the number of recent items. I think the normal number is 10. And I think the normal number of recent places here in open save dialog is five. Um, this one is one that I always do. Remove the alert message on first opening applications downloaded from the internet. So if you download an application, you go to open it for the first time, it'll give you that stupid warning saying like, are you sure it's not a virus? And that is just super annoying. So if you check that, it will get rid of it. Now one thing, oftentimes it will give you this warning saying it has to reopen Finder when you make a change. And that's fine, it's normal. Uh, it's not going to break anything, it just has to restart Finder, it has to restart the, the environment. Um, you can change the default screen capture file type, which is nice. Uh, and it gives you a lot of different options. So like if you're used to using JPEG, if you're familiar with it, would just prefer to use it rather than PNG, you can use that. You can choose any of the other ones as well. 
Um, I'm going to hit cancel because I'm not actually changing that. But there's a ton of extra features in here. So um, let me see one that would be easy to show you. Ah, well, like, for instance, you can get rid of show eject. So where I just had that DMG image there and mounted, uh, if I uncheck show eject, then when you right click it, it won't show the eject button there. Um, you can have it set so that it doesn't show empty trash. So, for instance, if I undo that, get rid of show empty trash, continue, move to trash. It'll do it there, but it doesn't show it in the finder. Uh, it won't show empty trash in Finder here. Um, so there's a bunch of little things like that. Uh, what else? Huh, show go to folder and connect to server. So for instance, connect to server is up here, right down here. So let's see if we can get rid of that. So this would be like a security thing, for instance, if you're um, you know, in a place where you don't want a person to be able to do that, you can see you can get rid of go to folder or connect to server. Um, if you don't want people to be able to connect to servers, you can get rid of that option. So in that case, it's kind of a security thing. But there's a whole bunch of these. Let me see what else. Ah, you can change the effect. So this is the genie effect. You can change it to scale effect. And you might be able to do this one. Yeah, and then it opens all of your windows again. You might be able to do this one anyways. I'm not sure. But you can see the scale effect is different. And then there is suck effect as well. Continue, and it's going to open that stuff all back up. So that's the suck effect rather than genie effect. Um, you can, let me see what else. Show only open applications. And this is for the doc down below. So if you want to get rid of favorites but still show the doc, you can do that one. A lot of these I'll go back and forth because I kind of already have it set up the way that I want it anyways. Uh, Safari is crap. Use Chrome because Safari is terrible. iTunes is crap. Use VLC. For login, uh, you can change the background. You can show a message on the window. You can hide, sleep, restart, and shutdown. So again, this would be like if, um, if you're constantly using the computer but your kids are logging into it but you don't want them to be able to shut it down because you might have something open that you want to be able to save first uh, you might want to get rid of this hide sleep restart and shut down in the login window so that your kids can log into it but can't turn it off at least from the login window um, it can help to you know stop some mistakes you can choose different startup modes uh, normal or verbose verbose will just show all of the stuff that's happening between when you hit the power on button and when it actually starts up. That's nice for diagnosing errors and issues. Um, you can turn the sound on and off. Uh, what else? I always get rid of this verify disk images and verify disks after burning. So this is another thing where if you download a program that's a DMG and you go to open it up, it'll first pop up with a little, uh, um, you know, bar going across telling you how much longer it's gonna take where it's verifying the disk image, uh, verifying that it's an okay disk image to use, I guess. And that probably mattered five or 10 years ago, but now, honestly, I've never had an issue where I had a disk image that did not work properly or that had an issue with it. So that's one where it's just a waste of time, so I turn that off. Um, you can turn on or off the graphic effects for Launchpad. That's, better, that, that's nice for, especially if you have an older machine running a newer version of Mac where it runs it kind of slowly. Um, you might want to turn off some of these graphic def graphic effects. Um, there was another one here I think I turned off. Might be in miscellaneous. I can't find it, but anyways. Um, you can mess with the menu bar icons. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. And if you know what it is that you're doing, great. If you don't know, you might want to try it and then turn it back, see if it makes any difference, see if it does what you want it to do, or see if it's something that you didn't know about. And you can always go to restore defaults and change all of these things back. But this is one of those 
cool free applications that anybody who has a Mac, in my opinion, should have it because it at least gives you some level of customization. Um, I mean, granted, you know, within Mac, there's a little bit of customization. You can change the desktop, you can change the dock slightly. Um, you know, like here, you've got genie effect or scale effect, but you don't have the suck effect. <laughs> so there's some stuff that you can customize in here, but Deeper gives you a just a deeper level of customization, basically. And it's one of those programs that I always use regardless of what version I've got. So this is 10, 12, 6, and this is on a Hackintosh, actually. So like this info is uh, sort of correct. Yeah, I've got an i3 with four gigs of memory and a GeForce 210, but um, it's not an iMac 27 inch. It's a custom built thing. Um, just running Hackintosh. So um, yeah, at any rate, it's a, it's a neat program and it gives you a little bit of control back over the machine that you paid thousands of dollars for and that you'd probably like to do some of these things on, even if you wasted your money and you should have bought a Windows PC or better yet, bought a Windows PC and then put Ubuntu Linux on it. But hey, you got a Mac. You can put Linux on Mac too. Anyways, hope this helps somebody. Enjoy.